The time has arrived. What's going on, everybody? Jammers here, and I'm here to present to you a new project Capcom are working on, known as Word on the Street, where we keep you up to date in regards to the terminology used when talking about Street Fighter or fighting games in general. Some terms you'll be familiar with, whilst others you might not have heard of. But let us find out what the 411 is in Street Fighter V. Now there's a lot of information to absorb in this video, so feel free to pause and rewind the video at your own pace. Now, let's begin! Every character has three sets of normal attacks in Street Fighter V. Standing attacks, crouching attacks, and jumping attacks, which apply to both the character's punch and kick buttons. In Street Fighter V, we use abbreviations for normals and they are as follows. Jab, meaning light punch. Strong, meaning medium punch. Fierce, meaning heavy punch. Short, meaning light kick. Forward, meaning medium kick. Roundhouse, meaning heavy kick. The heavy kick can also be referred to as sweep, but this only applies to the crouching version of the heavy kick. Normals are an integral part of fighting games, but with great versatility. They start combos, they help with pressure, and they counter certain attacks in open play. Every normal has a purpose. It is up to you as a player to find out what that purpose is. Blocking is very important when it comes to Street Fighter V. As your character is put in a defensive state, which softens the damage done by the opponent. There are two ways that you normally block in fighting games. The first way is the crouch block, which is how the vast majority of players block, as it covers mid attacks and low attacks. Now the other way you can block is by doing the stand block. Stand block also covers mid attacks, but more importantly you block aerial attacks, high attacks, and overhead. As stated before, blocking plays a massive part in Street Fighter V, but there are a multitude of ways to bypass blocking in this game, which I will shed light on in the future. There are three forms of traditional movement in Street Fighter V. Walking, dashing, and jumping. Let's start with walking. Characters can walk forward and backwards. For most characters, their forward walk speed is faster than their backwards walk speed. If you want your character to move quicker, then you can use the dash. Now there are two forms of dashing in Street Fighter V. A forward dash and a back dash. The forward dash allows you to close the gap on your opponent to either surprise them or maintain offense. The back dash, however, is the polar opposite. It is used as a means of an escape, mainly against throws, and can help you reposition yourself. In layman terms, the forward dash is an offensive tool, and the back dash is a defensive one. But what about jumping? Well, jumping can be used in multiple ways. The forward jump is another way to close the distance between you and the opponent, but in an aerial sense. Jumping backwards, also known as jump back, is used to help escape dangerous situations and put yourself at a comfortable position, quite similar to the back dash. The neutral jump, however, is slightly different than the previous two. Hold the controller directly upwards and your character will jump on the spot. This is used to avoid certain grounded attacks as well as some aerial attacks. Street Fighter V is extremely fast paced, and mastering all forms of movement will be instrumental in terms of achieving victory.
throws, also referred to as grabs, are quite prevalent in Street Fighter V and are a valuable asset to a character's arsenal. The two types of throws you should know about are the forward throw and the back throw. Forward throws are performed by holding forward on your controller and pressing light punch and light kick simultaneously. You can also press light punch and light kick without inputting a direction and a forward throw will still come out. For the back throw, you have to hold backwards on your controller and press light punch and light kick at the same time. Forward throws are the primary throw as they can help take the opponent closer to the corner and in the corner, they are really effective. The back throw, however, can inflict more damage and potentially more stun. All depends on the character. One last thing to note is that some characters have regular grabs that require the opponent to be in a certain position. Now what happens if the opponent inputs a throw around the same time you do? Well, what happens is, is that you nullify the throw which causes a throw escape. We usually call these throw techs or throw breaks. All in all, throws play a big part in Street Fighter V. Overheads are a simple way to open up your opponent on defense. They are executed by holding forward on your controller and pressing either a punch or a kick button. Depending on the character. However, there are some characters who are an exception to this rule. Chun-Li's overhead is executed by holding down forward on your controller and pressing medium kick. Nikali's overhead is executed by holding down forward on your controller and pressing hard punch. And Ken, well he has two overheads. One, which is done by holding backwards on your controller and pressing medium kick and the other, which is done by holding forward on your controller and holding hard kick. Overheads are generally used to catch the opponent off guard whilst they are in a crouching position. And in Street Fighter V, overheads have a very specific purpose, which is to either stun the opponent or get the KO. Think of overheads as an extra offensive option. Do keep in mind though, not every character in the game has an overhead, so it's in your best interest to find out which characters have the overhead option. <laughs>